Welcome back, my name is Guy and this is the fifth episode I'm doing of building a round table. Previously I've made the round skirts, I've veneered them, I've made the legs, I've done the joinery for the legs to the skirts, and I've made this, which is the top, which is a cherry crotch veneer that's in a sunburst pattern with a maple edge border. Now if you've missed any of those episodes, I'm going to leave a link in the corner for you to take a look at those later. This time I'm going to be putting an inlay between the field and the border, I'm going to be putting on the edge banding, I'm also going to be putting on a hardwood edging that goes all the way around it. Now I've written a blog article for this and it's located on the finewoodworking.com website and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. If you go there, there's also a link that gives you access to the finewoodworking.com article which goes into detail on how I did all this. So without further ado, let's get to work. I'm getting ready to cut the groove for the inlay that's going to go between the field and the border itself. I've got my router set up with a 16th inch bit. I'm going to cut a 16th of an inch down. I've got my pin back in my centering block. I just need to mount the uh, router back on there. So that's good to go. And I'm going to do this in two passes. I'm going to give myself about an eighth of an inch all the way around this. Well, I made the first pass and it uh, came out real nice. I don't think I'm going to make a second pass and make that any wider. I'm going to leave it right at a sixteenth of an inch. Well, now that I've got that groove cut for the inlay, I'm going to work on sizing the top to its final dimension. I've got my trammel arm set up to 24 inches, and I'm going to plunge down an eighth of an inch first, and I'm going to make a climb cut. I don't want to chip any of this out, so I'm going to go clockwise around this, and I'm going to make sure I take a real good control of the router while I'm doing this. I've made that initial cut and I have no tear out, which is always a good thing, especially on veneer like this. So I'm going to reset the router to a quarter inch depth and take the rest of the material off to give myself a quarter inch deep rabbit. Now that I have that quarter inch deep rabbit, I've got a pattern routing bit set up in my router table. I'm just going to push this up against that pattern bit and remove the material all the way around the outside of this. After I got the top size, that final dimension of 24 inches, I'm getting ready to add the edge banding. Now I'm going to be using an iron-on edge banding. This is a small piece of it. This is curly maple also. And there's going to be a seam no matter what I do. So I did strike a line that's perfectly perpendicular, and I also cut an edge of this that's perfectly perpendicular. I'm going to line that up. It's just going to give me my best chance of success. So I've got a piece here. Be really careful with it because it's really, really fragile. And line that up as best as I can so it's square. So when I get to the other side, I'll be able to cut it pretty easy. Now that I've got that piece there, I can just take an iron and tack that in the place to start it. All right, I'm going to go down a little bit further. Try to keep it centered on there as best as I can. And I just need to go around the whole piece like this, spinning this around as I keep going. I've got the edge banding on there. It's pretty delicate, so I have removed it from the back so I can lay this flat at least. And to take this off of here, I'm just going to use a plain blade I have. I'm just going to slowly work my way around. Take this off of here. Being real careful not to cut into the veneer. Well, I've got the bulk of the edge banding off. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to continue to do some more stuff on the edging of this. But after, I just want to get all that off there because it's really, really delicate and it's really easy to pull off right now. And I don't want that to happen. So now that I've got all the pieces that are proud off, I've just got some 400 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to go over this edge real quick to make sure there's no sharp corners or sharp edges on it and nothing that can catch. Back to my trammel arm of my router again. 
what I want to do is I want to make one eighth inch by one eighth inch rabbit that goes all the way around here. Again, I'm going to do this as a climb cut because I don't want to splinter any of this out. This should be the last routing operation I have to do to this piece. Well, that came out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. There's no splintering around the veneer edge. Now I have to get this thing off. And that's been double stick taped there for quite a while. I want to make sure that I don't pull up any of that veneer when I take it off. So I'm going to stick the screwdriver in here. This is a little wedge. Let's see if I can get that up. All right, so that part of the top is done. Now I have to work on putting the edging over the top of this and the string. I'm starting to apply the outer edge banding for this, and this is just an eighth inch hardwood strip that gets bent around the outside. And I'm doing it by quarters pretty much. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to square one end of this I'm going to cut it to about a quarter of this, square the other edge, and then glue it in. All right, now that I've got that glue in there, I'm going to butt that up as close as I can to that. We've got some blue tape already cut and ready to go. Put that on there. I'm just going to tack the starting point in place. Well, I've got the piece tacked down with the blue tape, but that's not near enough to keep it in place. So I've got this jig here. It's cut to the same radius as the top. We've got a piece on top, and what this is going to do is allow me to push this up against here and get pressure down and against. So what I need to do first, though, is hold this on here just lightly. Now that I've got that clamped somewhat in place, so it won't move around on me, Got a band clamp. It's going to go around the rest of this. Just going to tighten that down and apply pressure inwards. I've got a couple more clamps here. Well, I've got good pressure going down to the tabletop and against the tabletop, so that's going to be more than enough to hold that banding in place. And I'm just going to let this cook for a couple hours before I take this clamp off. I'm going to start applying the inlay that goes between the field and the border right here. So this is clamped down. This shouldn't go anywhere. Boy, I hope it doesn't. And uh, I want to do it in halves, but I don't want to create any seams where there are already seams. So I'm going to start like about right here. I'm just going to lay a thin bead of high glue all the way around. I spent a little bit of time and got that glue in there. My glue is nice because it tacks up real quick. It takes a while to completely set, but it tacks up pretty fast. And it won't leave any noticeable marks on the wood if it gets in there. So I can just wipe it up with water afterwards and it won't uh, affect the finish at all. So now that I've got that glue in there, I'm just going to start putting this inlay into that groove. It's pretty tight. That's the way I want it to be. Now I've got the bulk of this glue cleaned up. I'm going to let this sit for a couple hours. And then I'll come back. And I will get it flushed to the top with a card scraper. And that's the same thing I'm going to do to this edge over here. Well, the glue is dried on this inlay, and right now I'm just trying to get it as flush as I can with this block plane for now. I've got this edge out of the clamps, and I'm just cleaning it up and trying to flatten it as close as I can to the edge banding and the border with a card scraper. Now that I've got that flattened down pretty much, I'm just taking some, actually it's 400 grit sandpaper, because I don't want to take a lot of material off, especially on the edge banding and on the border. And I'm just trying to flatten that as much as I can right now 
don't need to be perfect at this point because I'll do some finish prep on it later and get that all flush. But for now, I want to get it pretty darn close. Now I've got that edging on here and it's reasonably flat to the top and the sides. I can go ahead and put the last piece on and then put the rest of the stringing or the inlay in here between the field and the border. Well, I've got all the edging and the inlay leveled down and I've sanded it down to 320. I just want to give you an idea what this is going to look like with a little finish on it. I've got some naphtha here. Just going to wet it down real quick and get a better look at that. Pretty happy with it overall. There's some things I'd probably do differently the second time. This is the first time I've ever done this, so I made a lot of mistakes. But uh, I think I recovered from them pretty well. So overall, I'm very happy with it. So that's it for now. Next time I'll be working on a few details that I need to get completed on the table. I'm going to be doing the surface prep for it. I'm going to do the assembly and then the finish on it. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.